Hi, I'm Arun Ramakrishnan. Welcome to FinOps Best Practices for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. A little bit more about myself. I'm a senior principal product manager with the OCI team. I'm the product owner for various cost management features, support rewards, and license manager on OCI. Let's get right into it. Why does FinOps matter? Here's a couple of statistics I want to share with you that were in the Flexera 2022 State of the Cloud Report. The statistic on the left, which is 59% of customers who took that survey essentially responded that cloud cost savings was their top priority. And about one third or 32% of the customers who responded estimated that, you know, 30% um, of their cloud investments are essentially wasted spend. It isn't well-optimized expenditure on the cloud. With these two important statistics in mind, it's important to understand why does this challenge exist on the cloud? And the primary reasons is this: the cloud has completely changed the consumption model for most enterprises. It has increased the silos that exist between engineering and finance teams with regards to infrastructure decisions. Where earlier, like, you know, engineering and finance teams had to work a lot closer because there was physical procurement involved and like, you know, they had to plan well in advance for capital expenses uh, for procuring servers. Right now, they don't have to do that. And there is this rapid shift in a cost model from a fixed cost model where you're investing in data centers uh, and self-hosting servers to this model where you can spin up infrastructure um, with a single push of a button. And with this capability, there exists rapid scalability. Now, rapid scalability also has the downside where, you know, it, it, there is a greater possibility that you have a lot of capacity that has been spun up that is being underutilized or it was utilized at some point, but it is not receiving the same level of usage all the time. With that, let's actually understand like what does FinOps really mean? Here's the definition that the FinOps Foundation has put together, right? So FinOps is essentially a management decision. They call it our discipline. They call it more of a cultural practice that enables organizations to maximize their business value by like, you know, improving the collaboration between engineering teams and finance teams and technology teams and business teams um, and trying to make that whole cloud expenditure or the cloud infrastructure decisions being more data driven uh, as opposed to something that operates in silos uh, and on the gut feel of engineers. Let's look at the different faces of FinOps. This is again borrowed from the FinOps Foundation. Um, they essentially um, break down FinOps into three important phases for any organization or enterprise. There is the inform phase, which is intended to help customers gain visibility into their cloud expenditure um, and you know, leveraging the tools that are at their disposal. There's the optimize phase, which is you know, reducing overconsumption, uh, making sure you're making the right automating, uh, automated decisions, um, and on also making decisions on future purchases based on like you know, your, what your current expenditure is um, and making optimal decisions around that. Operate. Uh, now this is a little more nebulous of the three phases, but the idea here is how do you make this thinking about cost a part or and consumption um, a, a part of every decision that you make on your cloud infrastructure? And how do you make it a part of your organizational culture? Now, before we get into the details of how OCI helps you get there, let's talk some prerequisites about some OCI constructs that you should familiarize yourself uh, to make FinOps really easy for yourself on OCI. So key concepts here are organizations, tenancies, compartments, and tags. An organization essentially allows you to build a parent-child relationship between your various tenancies. It gives you the ability to have different tenancies to isolate workloads between your different business units, but at the same time, it gives you some level of central governance and administration, both in being able to view cost and consumption data, 
as well as enforcing certain governance rules across your different business units. Now, a tenancy uh, is typically the strongest boundary of isolation that exists between workloads, right? And within a tenancy, you have this construct called compartments, which are essentially folder systems underneath which all your resources, your compute instances, your database instances, your storage resources, et cetera, live. And to each cloud resource, you can attach a tag. You can attach a tag that further adds metadata to this resource, identifying what that resource is being used for. If you have a resource that is being shared by multiple teams, you can add tags that will help you break down costs down the line across these multiple teams. So I cannot emphasize this enough. Before you plan um, moving your workload to OCI, try and figure out what your compartment tagging structure should be. The sooner you do it, the sooner you invest in making the right, like, you know, the compartment and tag structure that makes cost attribution for you easier, the better and easier your FinOps implementation would be. Let's now get into the more details, right? Let's look into how OCI enables you different ways of gaining visibility into your spending, like the inform phase. And there are three main phases we'll go over, or three ways in which you can do inform on OCI. Number one is the in-console tools. We have tools such as cost analysis, uh, which lets you visualize consumption over time. This tool has a rich set of group by and filtering dimensions that are available to you. You can do grouping or filtering by compartments, by tags, by a service name, um, by a resource, if you would. You can save queries for reuse. So you can save queries in the console that can be shared with other users that can come in and launch it again. You can, it, this also integrates with the OCI dashboard. So you can potentially create multiple widgets um, on the OCI dashboard service for using your cost management widget, uh, which can uh, help provide that executive level picture or, or a kind of a quick insight into your environment at any given point in time. You can also schedule reports using cost analysis so that reports can run at a specific time that you or specific cadence that you specify and deliver the output to an object store of your uh, choice in either CSV or PDF format. At any given point, you can actually come into the, the cost analysis UI and export your both your graphical and tabular data into either CSV or PDF formats. Um, and what's more, we also offer you the capability of predicting, you know, future consumption based on your past consumption trends. Uh, and in addition to that, there's also the ability to break down consumption across two grouping dimensions at the same point in time. What I mean by that is you can uh, use cost analysis to understand your consumption uh, by service across different regions. Or if you have uh, like, you know, certain workloads that use tagging and are shared, then you can use this to essentially do like a grouping by a tag across a certain set of compartments. Um, so all of these rich set of capabilities exist in the OCI console for you. But we understand that this isn't the only way you want to report data. You probably have some custom needs or you have needs where you need to tie the your cloud consumption data with other data sets that you have. And we enable that experience too. We generate cost reports. These are complementary cost reports that OCI generates multiple three or four times a day um, uh, in, uh, on your tenancy. And this cost reports contain very granular detailed data. It contains hourly consumption data on a per resource basis, including the unit price information and consumption at that given point in time and all the metadata that's associated with the resource, such as all the tagging and compartment information of that specific resource. And what this report enables you to do is you can easily set up automation that imports this CSV files or reports into a data warehouse of your choice, such as autonomous database. And you can build further visualization on top of this using tools such as Oracle Analytics Cloud. <clears throat> now I understand 
that you may have other reporting needs as well, right? Which you may have a presence across multiple cloud providers. And, <coughs> excuse me, you may have uh, reporting needs across multiple cloud providers that the um, custom cost reporting or the in-console tool may not meet your requirements for. Uh, in such cases, you can leverage partners out there, such as Cloud Health, such as Flexera, such as <coughs> excuse me, such as Cloudwain, uh, which will help you give uh, give you a single pane of grass, a single pane of glass across these multiple cloud providers, and it, this will help you achieve a singular view, which helps you do cross charging, budget tracking and also potentially looking at optimization recommendations across your entire suite of cloud prisons, not just on OCI. <coughs> Let's talk about optimization or the optimized phase of the, um, for FinOps. And what we'll talk about here is what are the right sizing opportunities that are available to you either in console or via third party tools. And how can you automate to proactively save consumption on OCI? Now within OCI, we have a great tool available for you called Cloud Advisor, which helps you identify best practices and optimization opportunities on OCI. It enables cost saving opportunities on a per resource basis, um, you know, giving you like a dollar saving recommendation if you downsize a certain compute resource or delete unused uh, block storage or object storage. Uh, and these um, recommendations can be implemented by a single click, which is we call it a fix it flow. You do not have to navigate to the specific resource with the right set of permissions. You can come into your Cloud Advisor console and just use the fix it the single fix it flow and implement these recommendations and gain uh, instant cost savings. Now, what is cooler about Cloud Advisor is all of these recommendations are highly customizable, right? They are not like one size fits all recommendations that you receive, but they're recommendations that you can customize depending on the type of workloads that you have. You can choose to have a more aggressive recommendation profile for some of your lower environments, or you may choose to have a more conservative profile for some critical line of business application that you're running on the cloud. Um, so it offers you a great deal of flexibility and ability to override the recommendations based, and you can decide what is the basis of your recommendation. Right? You can decide whether it should be based on CPU utilization, uh, on average CPU utilization, or 95th percentile. All of these capabilities exist within Cloud Advisor. Um, but Cloud Advisor isn't the only way. A lot of the partner tools that we spoke about or custom cloud tools that we spoke about also offer optimization opportunities. Um, and we recommend that if you're using one of them, that you should leverage it to truly implement FinOps in your environment. Let's also talk about monitoring, spending, and triggering automation. So within OCI, we have a budgeting capability, uh, and this budget helps you spend uh, set up recurring, recurring budgets that helps you monitor uh, consumption against an actual threshold or forecasted spending threshold. Uh, and this budget can be targeted at like, you know, a subscription level, or it could be budget at, at a child tenancy level if you're an organization structure, or within a given tenancy, you can create a budget against a compartment or against a specific tag. Uh, but what's more is this budget, if based on your actual or forecasted spending threshold violations, you can actually trigger um, a, an email notification um, which helps you kind of stay on top of like, you know, any, um, uh, any of these pot potential violations, or you could take it to the next level where you can trigger optimization, um, automation by leveraging the integration that exists between the budget service and event service 
and you can use it to trigger functions such as like you know a function that could create a quota uh, which prevents the creation of more resources if a budget spending threshing uh, threshold violation exists for a specific compartment we also encourage if you're using a third party um, or a custom cloud uh, tool, then uh, such as Cloud Health, we encourage you to leverage the budgeting capability offered by such tools as well, uh, which will potentially help you understand consumption across multiple cloud providers and send a uniform budget against across all of them. Let's talk about the universal credit model next. Right, that is also an important part of the optimize. Like, you know, purchase decisions are an important part of the optimization decision um, in, in the FinOps model. Now, the universal credit model that Oracle Cloud offers is far simpler than what some of our competitors offer in terms of reserved instances, savings plans, or committed use discounts. The way the universal credit model works is you as a customer commit to a certain spend amount, and that commitment offers you access to a wide range of Oracle IaaS and PaaS services, far more than what our competitors would offer. Uh, and once you're a part of a committed discount plan, um, you know this committed use gives you significant discount on the resources that you will use. Uh, and what's more, we believe in building transparency uh, in this universal credit model. And we, in the console, we have different ways in which we communicate or bring transparency to like, what is the total credit value or total uh, contract value that you have with us? What is the metadata of the order that you have specified with us? Um, as well as some information such as access to your private rate card so that you can use that information to compare it against your in invoices or your cost data. Let's now talk about the um, operate phase or how do you make FinOps a part of your culture? Now, for a select set of customers in OCI, um, we offer a complimentary service called Cloud Investment Services. Uh, and what this services uh, provide are essentially the ability um, where we'll have a white glove service that helps you lift and shift your existing workloads to Oracle Cloud, understand how to use the different tools that are available to you uh, and how to optimize cost and um, make sure like, you know, understanding things such as like, you know, what are the implications of your on-premise like licenses that you already own on-premise and how can you leverage them to save additional money by uh, using BYOL or bring your own license uh, on the Oracle Cloud. Um, also trying to understand uh, and align your key business metrics with like, you know, the tools um, uh, that are offered on OCI, such as budgeting, forecasting, uh, and working with you on making sure um, there's a thorough understanding of like, you know, the governance tools and capabilities that exist in OCI. With this, I do want to summarize by here are different ways I would recommend as you embark on your FinOps journey with OCI. Number one, organize your resources. So plan for your compartments and tags that make it very easy um, to establish accountability. Democratize data. You know, create groups, share these different tools that we discussed during this presentation with your different teams. Uh, um, and you can do it via IAM policies. So at the same time, you're able to share this access uh, while having a great deal of control on who has access to that specific data. Be proactive in optimization. Like, you know, we have tools such as Cloud Advisor at your disposal. Leverage them to control the, um, runaway expenditure in your environment. And what's further, you can use, like, you know, um, tools such as quotas that um, create help, almost help you create a policy-like statement that will help you uh, create almost a budget or a ceiling um, against your expensive resources. So you can prevent the creation of like an expensive database resource um, in your test environment, for example. Then if you have custom needs, then 
by all means, consider in extending the cost reports that are available in OCI to like, you know, a data warehouse solution of your choice or work with a cloud cost management provider such as Cloud Health or Flexera uh, to get that next level of detail. And there's a host of resources that are out there to help you on your FinOps journey. There is the FinOps Foundation. Consider um, joining them or consider uh, participating in their events. Um, as well as from like an OCI perspective, we offer the cloud investment services, uh, a, a complimentary service to help enable you on your FinOps journey. With that, I thank you for your time uh, and wish you all the very best on your FinOps journey with OCI.